Here we're looking at our electrically actuated three-piece ball valve. So this is made up of two components. It, it comes as a one unit, but realistically it's two components. It's a three-piece stainless steel ball valve and an IP67 electric actuator. So we'll cover a few features of each and then talk about the combined unit and show it operating. The, the three-piece ball valve, uh, this is 316 stainless steel. It'll do a thousand psi. Well, it, we call it a thousand psi. Some of the smaller ones will do higher, but the larger ones will, will do a thousand psi. You've just got to remember your temperature versus pressure curve here. So obviously the higher the temperature, the, the less the pressure. It's got an ISO pad mount, which you see there. That lets you direct mount the actuator. It's got an FKM seal up in here. It's got reinforced Teflon seats. They've got a, a glass filler in them. It just makes them stronger. Uh, live loaded packings and bellville washers. The actuator itself, all our actuators are IP67. They come with standard with a manual override and extra limit switches. Quite often features that you don't see in other brands of actuators. Now this one we've got the, the top off here as we've just temporarily wired it up. This is what it would look like with its top on. It's got a visual indicator on the top. And you can see now that they do vary. Obviously, the bigger the ball valve, the bigger the actuator due to the torque required. And one thing you'll note is they're all standard with a manual override, but the manual override is different. On the larger on the larger models, it's a hand wheel on the side. On the smaller ones like this, it's it's this little spanner one on, underneath it. Uh, we've got a female star drive underneath them. M20 cable entries. You've got to remember this is IP67 as long as you use an IP67 approved cable gland. And we won't cover the wiring. The wiring depends on the voltage. You know, AC and DC are slightly different. Um, but what we will do is show this one operating and, and have a chat about what you'll see. So we've got it rigged up to our power supply here. I'll just go around and turn this. Now, with the, this is an electric motor with a gearbox. So if you lost power, it's going to stop wherever the position is. It doesn't have a fail-safe position. You can get a spring return electric actuator. They're uh, rather expensive when you compare them to a pneumatic. And this one, you, you, you take about, this is probably about eight, six to eight seconds for a cycle. And a cycle is a 90 degree turn. So we've got a ball valve that's fully open to fully closed. Some of the larger ones, are maybe 10 to 12 seconds. So you've got to think about your cycle time. Also your duty rate, you wouldn't operate this continuously because you need to dissipate some of the heat. Unlike pneumatic, you could have it going, you know, open, close, open, close. It'll be very quick in pneumatic and you can continuously do it. So if we have a look at this working, you can see I'm cycling this from open to close. You can see the visual indicator on the top turn. Now, once that hits, I've still got my hand on the switch but it's this cam that you see on the shaft down there that'll actually go and cut the power to the motor. If we go back the other way, we'll cycle back again. You can see those cams moving. We'll hit the end and it will cut out again. There's two extra limit switches on there as well. That'll give you voltage free feedback. So it doesn't have to be your control voltage you put through those. Another standard feature. Apart from that, it, it's kind of hard to visualize that that has got an open close that you see there. It's just there's two different segments you're looking at that'll go from open to close. So we'll tell you as well uh, visually whether it's going from open to close. Very reliable unit. It's a, a very industrial grade electric actuator. We supply a, a lot of these and don't get any issues.